it's Dr. Hannah with this week's Hot Topic. Today I want to talk to you about Avoidant Restrictive Food Intake Disorder, or ARFID. It's a new diagnosis and it was previously called Selective Eating Disorder. Now it's similar to anorexia, but because both disorders involve limitations in the amount of food of types that are consumed, but unlike anorexia, ARFID doesn't involve any distress about body shape or sizes or fear of being fat. So if you're thinking of like, okay, well, why does this matter? This actually goes beyond that normal picky eater that's normally um, a typical phase with most children that go through. Now the biggest concern is that the problem with uh, a person who has the ARFID doesn't consume enough calories to grow or develop properly. So especially important if you have children that are a little bit picky eaters. And in, in adults, it's basically, they don't have enough calories to maintain basic body functions, which is a huge problem. So a couple risk factors for people who might be more susceptible to this. Um, anybody who has autism, on the, they might be a little bit more likely to develop the ARFID, and especially those with um, ADHD and intellectual disabilities. Um, children who don't outgrow that normal picky eating, like I had said, um, or if their picky eating is super severe and it appears to be more likely to develop into this ARFID. Um, and many children with the Alfred also have co-occurring anxiety disorders and they also are at higher risk for other psychiatric disorders. So those are a little bit more that you're a little bit more susceptible to it. Now, if you're wondering like, well, is this just picky eating or is this actually the warning symptoms? So some of the warning symptoms um, are specifically like a short list of acceptable foods that you eat or eating particular foods that have similar characteristics that um, have different more, it's a texture thing. So it's either they're crunchy or they're colorless or something that just doesn't seem like it's super, super picky. Um, it could be a preference for a particular food preparation method. Um, they could avoid particular vegetables or protein sources like, oh, I don't eat chicken or I don't eat beef just because they just don't want to. Um, they eliminate foods from their diet and they never necessarily put them back into their diet. So it's kind of a clever way that they can just get rid of it. Um, if you notice somebody has poor weight gain or growth, so in children, um, they may be also normal height and growth, but they have nutrient deficiencies like iron and vitamin A and vitamin C. Um, that's typically a red flag there. If they skip one or more entire food groups, so like I said, the food limitations or food eliminations in their diet, um, and it most likely is negatively impacting their normal social behavior. So they could avoid the particular foods based on texture, colors, and it makes them super uncomfortable if you add something that they're just not quite used to or if it's something um, new for them. It could be frequent vomiting or gagging to exposure to certain types of foods. Um, and because both anorexia and the ARFID have the inability to meet nutritional needs, both disorders have a similar psychological um, or a physical sign and medical consequences. So some of these issues that they could get, if they have them are more stomach cramps, um, other non-specific gastrointestinal complaints like constipation, acid reflux, those type of things. Um, in females, you could actually have menstrual irregularities. So you're missing periods or only having a period while you're hormonal, um, you're on the contraceptives like a birth control pill. Um, and it's not considered actual true period. So um, some of those issues if it's only coming around because you're on medications. Um, difficulty concentrating, abnormal lab findings, so you're anemic, or you have a low thyroid, uh, low hormone levels, low potassium, low blood cell counts, um, you have a really slow resting heart rate, you have a post-puberty female losses of your menstrual period. Um, it could be dizzy or fainting or dizzy and fainting when you stand up or change positions. Uh, feeling cold all the time, sleeping problems, dry skin, uh, dry and brittle nails, fine hair on your body, um, thinning a hair on your head and it's brittle. You could have muscle weakness. Um, you could have cold or mottled hands and swelling of your hands and feet, poor wound healing. Um, and impaired immune function. So there's quite a bit of significant um, things that you could have if you have ARFID um, and it's just, it's something that's very detrimental to your body. So how do you treat the ARFID? So the major thing is because ARFID is a sensory disorder, um, as well as an eating disorder, you have to treat it through somatic treatment and you also have to have some counseling in there. So therapy and treatment are needed to help retrain the body because you actually have to retrain the, the tissues uh, because the body is starting to become so tolerant and even trying the tiniest bite of something new 
it's going to cause the body to kind of freak out because it's not used to it. So our fit is not something that you want to be like, oh, they're just a picky eater and it's just kind of what you're used to. It actually can be a super serious thing. So a little bit different than my normal hot topics, but I figured this would be something that I could share with. That's something a little different that somebody may not necessarily know that this is an issue. But if you have this and you are um, suffering from it or you know somebody who has, who is really struggling with this, um, this is something that's super serious and you can help them. Um, they can get through it, but it's gonna take a little bit of time and process. So that's all I have for you guys this week. I will see you guys next time.